Hi again, David here. And Aisha. Congratulations. By the end of today, you'll be halfway home. Step three. Crafting your story. But what exactly does that mean? Well, now that you've found a courage story to tell. And told it for the first time. You're ready to shape your storytelling into something you can really be proud of. We can do this by focusing on three things. A strong beginning. The hook. A climax. The moment. And a message or moral. The payoff. We've been over this once before, right? On day one? <laughs> After we watched Merritt and Karen's stories of courage. But it's like a magic trick. When you see it the first time. You've got no idea how it's done. So we're gonna break it down together. And share some secrets for success. Let's begin by watching Courage Story number three from Lance. Hello, my name's Lance, and this is my story of courage for hashtag Spirit Corps. In my teens, my life began to get complicated by my parents' divorce, deaths in the family, and largely due to choices I was making. To the casual observer, I appeared okay, but to the trained eye, things were starting to spin out of control. My mother's eye was well-trained. She saw my efforts to charm my way through tricky patches for what they were. My mom, Mook, to family and close friends, was the person I was closest to in the world. She had a great sense of humor, but could be relentlessly direct. She was wise as well as smart. Although I was in the habit of trying to dodge what wisdom she was doling out, my friends weren't. Often, I would come home to find a friend of mine sitting at the dining room table talking with Mook. That was the kind of woman she was. I get to college and I get into some trouble. Soon after, I need to take a break and go home. My mother's not pleased, but she's in my corner. Things get worse. My father dies. we would not been close for years, but it still throws me for a loop. I pull myself together enough to get back to college, but the spinning out of control intensifies. Fast forward to age 21, fall of what should have been my senior year. My mother calls me and tells me she has cancer, lung and liver. Not to worry, she says. She's only 57, we'll beat this thing. And she does get off to a good start in beating it. And then in the space of a week, things go from improving to she has a month, to maybe a week, to my sister telling me I need to get home tonight, leave as soon as you can. I drive through the middle of the night and return to an empty home. A bit of sleep, and then I make my shaky way to the hospital. Riding up the elevator to her floor, I tell myself to stay calm, breathe, be ready for whatever condition she's in. She might not know my name. I go to the nurse's station and tell them I'm there to see Anne Cromwell. I'm her son. The nurse tells me she is so sorry, but my mom has just passed, not 10 minutes before. I was not ready for that. I had missed her. I shuffled in a daze around the corner toward her room, but I could not walk in. I stopped and leaned against the wall just outside her door. I had to go in, I had to see her, but I just stood there back against the wall, completely paralyzed. Finally, drawing on I know not what, I take a deep breath and push myself off the wall, take the next steps and walk into that room to see her and to say goodbye. She looked different, so calm, smooth, her face like porcelain. I felt that what made her her was leaving that room and was almost gone. I hadn't missed her entirely. Looking back, I can see how scared I was and that though it didn't feel like a choice at the time, I did make a choice. I could have turned away and spun further out of control, but I did not. I dug deep and drew on her wisdom that was actually in me. In that moment, I chose to face things, to act, despite fear, which is what I now know courage is all about. I became an adult in that moment. Soon after that, my spinning out of control came to a stop. Thank you for listening. Please share your story of courage with us. Tag at Spirit Series USA and join the hashtag Spirit Core conversation. 
Together, we grow. Okay. Wow. Where to begin? At the beginning, right? With the hook. Not exactly. Okay, you can't know how to get your listener interested. Until you know what you want them to be interested in. Mm -hmm. Start your story crafting with the climax, the moment. A specific point in time or event when everything becomes clear. Or changes. In Merritt's story. Where she steps on the stage. In Karen's story. Where she jumps in the water. So let's look again at the script for Lance's story. And working together, find his moment. Here's a hint. It's somewhere on the screen now. Please stop the video here while you figure this out. Welcome back. We'll bet you landed on uh, one of two spots. When the nurse tells Lance his mother has passed. Or when he pushes himself off the wall and walks into her room. The moment he hears about his mother is very dramatic. But we're going with option two. This is a courage story after all, and that is Lance's moment of courage. As he tells us later, his whole life changes in that moment. He steps into adulthood. When you look back, you'll see his whole story builds to this. And that's no accident. He built his whole story around this. That should be true in your story as well. That's why we start here with the moment. So let's move on. To the hook, right? I knew that. Mm -hmm. The payoff is the point. The moral, what you learned. How you grew. And why it's so important. Merritt learned that she could face her fear. Being nervous is just part of the process. And Karen discovered that finding courage to face a small thing can help us feel safe. About the big and scary things. So please stop your video now and find the payoff in Lance's story. The way we see it, Lance's payoff has two parts. Number one, the strength he needed to face his fear was actually there all along. Mm. His mother's wisdom was in him. And number two, after choosing to face this huge loss head on, Lance was able to stop running away from everything else in his life. Like we said on day one, this is your gift to the listener. Hmm. But like many good gift givers, think Santa, get in and get out fast. After your story has climaxed in the moment, keep the payoff short and sweet. If you're clear about what you've learned, and why it's important, make your point. And go. <laughs> this will leave your listener thinking. And now it's time for the, the book. book. Tell us why we should be interested. Right up front. Why should we care? It's a tease. Make the audience wanna know more. Without giving it all away. This is your promise to the listener that your story will be worth their time. Merritt's story started when I auditioned for The Lion King. I'm already interested. <laughs> I never could have imagined that in just a few months I would be making my Broadway debut. She got me. I want to know more. Or Karen, right up front. Sometimes you just have to face your fear. She gives nothing away but she's promising us that this story will be worth it. Your listeners should feel like they don't know where they're going. But they sense somehow you're going to take them there. So writing the hook is pretty easy. And only possible. Once you know where the story is going, the moment. And the payoff. Karen knows her story climaxes when she jumps into the water. And knows the point of her story is that facing small fears helps you face big ones. So she starts, sometimes you just have to face your fears. Okay, 
Here is the beginning of Lance's story. Please stop the video and find his hook. Did you land on this? To the casual observer, I appeared to be okay. But to the trained eye, things were starting to spin out of control. Can you feel the danger there? Does it make you want to hear more? Once you start paying attention, you'll begin to see hooks everywhere. At the beginning of every Netflix episode. <laughs> or often right at the end. Yeah. That's why you keep watching, or shall we say, binging. Nearly every pop song has a hook. It makes you want to hear more. And promises you're gonna love it. So here are the next steps. First, reread your first draft with your partner and find the moment. If it's not entirely clear yet, talk it through. And figure it out. <laughs> Don't be afraid to be a little creative here. Maybe you don't remember exactly the way it happened? No problem. Make it up. He didn't say lie. Just use your imagination a bit if you need to. It's a story, after all. Don't be afraid to make it a good one. Okay. After you've each found your moment, move on to the payoff. Talk it through. What did you learn? And why is that important? Not just to you. To all of us. Then, finally, the, the hook. hook. Make it interesting. Or mysterious. Have fun. With your three elements in place, fill in the gaps. Lance does that by telling us about his mother. And about the problems he was having at the time. Karen describes the hike. And her fear of snakes. We can't understand her moment without that. Or her courage. What details does your story need in order to set up the climax? Merritt tells us about the rehearsals before the big show. And how terrified she was walking down the aisle in her elephant suit. We need to know that. <laughs> Otherwise, what's the big deal about making it to the stage? Where's the Broadway joy? Once you've given it your best, send that draft to your partner. Exchange notes. Check out week two guidelines. For some tips about what to look for in your partner's second draft. Take those notes to heart when you get them back from your partner. Remember, they are your first audience. It doesn't mean everything they say is right. But there will be something right in what they say. Your job is to listen, to take in their comments. And see what lands. What actually feels right for you. Then make these last changes. And send the story to your coach. End of week two. Well, you'll see us one more time. In a few days. Work hard. Help each other. And be brave.